Hello everyone, and welcome to Hyperanalyzing MSI, the series where I discuss the biggest moments from MSI and give attention to the tiniest details that can decide the outcome of a game. This week we will look at some plays from the 2022 MSI Rumble stage. G2 beat Evil Geniuses for the sixth time in a row with this chaotic teamfight. EG though trying to do something on the map here as they start up this Baron down to yeah, 7,000. Broken Blade can TP in, Paranoia going in as they look to like isolate Impact off towards the tide. Caps forced off towards the top side, Broken Blade TP'd in the middle of the fight. Blackhead and Yankos are looking for Impact, they should be able to take him down through this stopwatch. Impact tries to get away, the Fear Tether doesn't quite hit, Hero's entrance coming in as EG. Danny now forced low, Caps low as well, Blackhead goes on a killing spree as he kills off Jojo. Caps chases down Danny, and EG, you said they tried to flip it. Well the flip sadly came up tails, the Impact ultimate at the end has a little of it. Inspired will fall in the end, you can steal away caps, but it's the closest you'll get to winning this game. Yeah. Evil Geniuses start Baron to force a team fight with Impact setting up on the flank, but in a heavily warded part of the jungle. Yanko starts the fight by diving onto Impact with the Nocturne ult, and Flacket follows him for the damage. This is crucial because given the current state of the game, any team fight is probably decided by how good Impact slicing Maelstrom is. Yanko recognizes that and commits to preventing Impact from finding a good ulti. With Impact using Zonia's Hourglass, Flacket backs away to help the rest of his team with the fight in the river, but Impact does a great job getting away from Yankos with a quick stun and great sidestep. However, without his slicing Maelstrom, EG is losing the fight in the river. Broken Blade teleports into the Baron Pit and jumps onto Jojo Pune, while Caps is able to distract the rest of EG. Vulcan hits nobody with his taunt as he tries to catch Caps over the wall, but he ends up between Caps and Broken Blade with neither of them in range. After his Undying Rage ends, Jojo Pune falls to a very long range Baron attack, for which Flacket is given the kill credit. Caps is able to chase down Danny, who flashes away while channeling True Shot Barrage. The flash keeps Danny alive for a second longer, but it puts him outside of Caps' Hollowed Mist, meaning he doesn't take damage from the True Shot Barrage, which does end up hitting Yankos and popping his GA, although that doesn't change the outcome of this fight. G2 quickly pick up 3 kills as the fight moves into the jungle and towards the low health impact. It is now a 2v5, and G2 are fairly split during this chase down, which makes it clear that a good slicing maelstrom is never going to happen, so Impact takes what he can in desperation, which is a 2-man ult and a kill against Caps, before G2 take him down. G2 are able to stop the resetting Viego in the 4v1, and pick up an ace and a quadra kill for Flacket before ending the game. T1 finalized their win against PSG Talon with this clean teamfight. I'm just watching Kai Wing. Every time someone steps close, I'm like, Kai Wing, you've got the flash. What are you going to do? And maybe they're going to go for it here. Oh. Went burning the miss, though, very early on. Small window where she's quite vulnerable. And Carrie is seized, and he's going to try to get this fight kicked off. Gold card goes in. The rest of the team now being split up. Unified, the kick has connected. Trying to create as much space as they can with the Galio. But now he's leaping out to safety. He's still standing. But TF can go in anywhere he wants to. Vanguard on the backside. Just focusing on Unified. Unified. The spear from downtown. Goomba finds his man. Him down, Juhan going golden, but T1, they've already taken the fight. As both teams position in the mid lane, this play starts off with Hanabi stepping forward and forcing Karia back. Hanabi does use the Hollowed Mist to do this, making him more vulnerable until that is back off cooldown. As he dashes forward to clear a Gangplank Barrel, Karia takes advantage of Hanabi's cooldowns, landing an instant Body Slam Flash combo into an explosive cask to knock Hanabi away from the rest of his team. Cannon Barrage keeps PSG away from their top laner, and a big kick from Owner through the choke point further dissuades PSG from trying to save Hanabi. Owner's kick onto Juhan also does a lot of damage to Unified and sets up for Owner to hit Unified with a sonic wave. As Hanabi falls to the rest of T1, Owner dives in, trunking Unified to very low health while being able to jump back to the safety of his own team. Faker uses the TF ult to teleport into the bush behind PSG and cut off their escape. He stuns Bay with the gold card before using Zonius to protect his own life. Unified tries to do a quick cleanse even though the gold card doesn't hit him, but that doesn't matter since he gets sniped by Gumayushi, who even flashes forward for the kill. Bay can't escape after the gold card's done and gets taken down by T1 while Kaiwing gets zoned out of his own base. T1 pushes forward to win the game off of this cleanly played teamfight. RNG prevented a potential upset from the Saigon Buffalo by winning this teamfight. RNG head over to the Elder. Yep. Elder is Ooh, fog of war. The keep fight. Oh, this is gonna be big! Stop watch burn by BJ. Here we go. Froggy in the front line. Roots on a two. Ming taking a long time to die though. And we get a one for one. Jungle for support. Taki low gets out for now. But Wei is on the flank. Shahu Zonia Shogun Zonia's as well should have ult. Gets feared. Gets knocked down. Almost already gone. Finn picks up two. Gala's alive. Hasbeth left alone and falls. Five dead. With the Elder Dragon about to spawn, Saigon Buffalo are forced to face check the bottom river. 
Our NG go for a surprise pick onto B and J, but he is able to use Starwatch to delay the initial engage. Froggy Spirit rushes over the wall to Route 2 with Everfrost, and Hazmid lands Shuriken Flip onto Ming and is able to dash over the wall to claim the first kill of the fight. Taki fails his flash over the wall, although that does put him in a good position to wrap around the wall and keep both Xiaohu and Gala away from the rest of the fight. However, as Bin teleports into the fight, his Banshee's Veil blocks the knockup from Depth Charge, allowing him to access the SGB backline. Meanwhile, Wei is able to chase down Binjay, and Shogun's Feather Storm is basically wasted as he dodges no damage and also throws the feathers into a wall, which doesn't put them in a spot where he can utilize them later. As Bin dashes forward, both Shogun and Froggy try to flash past him to reach the RNG backline, but Xiaohu instantly uses Sonya's Hourglass, preventing them from finding a kill. This causes Shogun and Froggy to respond with their own stasis, which do prevent a lot of damage from Needlewalk, but they both get snipped down by Bin anyway. Hazmid is the only hope for the Saigon Buffalo in this fight, but Gala flashes over the wall as he attempts to land another Shuriken Flip, which prevents Hazmid from following Gala and likely finishing off both members of the RNG backline. He is still barely able to take down Xiaohu at the end of this fight, but the rest of RNG kill him and push mid lane with their three remaining players to win the game. Evil Geniuses defeated T1 in this fight at the Baron Pit. The jungler in there, get some vision down. Now Make though, 9,000 health, they've got time to fight it. All right, no rent stack, so Nocturne walks in, Gala the same. Here comes the Terra Colty as well. Will they burn down Baron? Looks like they're gonna try it right now. Inspired, 2K health smite, it's gonna go to Evil Geniuses! And I've seen this before! Danny Free Fire's attack by Zayu stays alive! Evil Geniuses! T1 starts up the second Baron of the game with all of EG ready to contest. Inspire pops Paranoia early, and the reduced vision prevents most of the T1 players from seeing Jojo Pune approach on the flank. Karyo uses Cosmic Radiance incredibly early, possibly due to the lack of vision from the Nocturne ult, which means that the invulnerability from the Terek ultimate has almost expired by the time the fight really starts. However, as Gumayushi hops around the back of the Baron Pit to get away from Jojo Pune's taunt, he also ends up outside of the Terek ult, so he does not get that invulnerability. Inspired notices this and dives onto him, getting the kill with help from the rest of EG. This is an incredibly important kill, as it not only removes the enemy AD carry for the fight, but it also prevents Gumayushi from securing the Baron with Rend. Instead, Gumayushi dies just as Baron's health is nearing smite range, and with Inspired now in the pit, he is able to steal the Baron away for the evil geniuses. Guma is able to pull in Karyo with the Callista ultimate before he falls, and Karyo uses this to try and dive onto Danny. However, he is unable to catch him since Danny is moving to the left as EG takes down Owner. Karia has to flash to land the stun on Danny, but Danny is able to cleanse and flash to get back to safety. As he takes a step back towards Zeus, he just barely avoids the last charge of Zeus's needlework, which prevents Zeus from being able to trade a kill back. Evil geniuses pick up four kills and the Baron without trading anything in return, giving them the control they needed to pick up the win against T1. G2 took down RNG on the first day of Rumble stage with this crazy team fight. Again, playing for Dragon Soul. Mountain Soul is going to be so much for them if it happens. Uh, Scuttle does belong to RNG, makes it a bit tougher to navigate. They can't play full Fog of War, but G2 should feel comfortable. I mean, especially now, right? We see Black oh, coming out with the GA. Bin going to look for a bit of engage. Jumps right on in. A lot of damage. Target with Vice gets so low, oh, he wow. does. Beautiful start here. Will it be enough for the rest of it? Broken Blade trying to buy some time. Ming going to jump right back out. We'll stay alive, but Bin has to be careful. Going right back in. Will come for the knockup on a one. Stopwatch burn. And down goes Sauhu. Will they trade it back? Yo! He's staying oh, alive! Kill shot barrage! Gala stays alive! Kev finds one way on the way out. Has a guardian angel though. Flash in. It's gonna be enough for Caps. Burns the Zonia's hourglass yet again. Gala played to his limits, but ignited and falls. And G2! Ben starts the fight with a blast cone into the river that also really separates Wei from the fight. With help from Ming, Ben is able to take down Targamus before the rest of the players in the game even join the fight. Despite the fact that it is already a 4v5, G2 is able to win this fight thanks to some key abilities. First, Broken Blade steps into the Hollowed Mist to land Hemo Plague on both Bin and Ming. His pool is forced out early, but Bin stays just close enough for Broken Blade to land his empowered Q, which combined with the heal from his ultimate brings him back to full health. Caps also lands a great paddle star from over the wall onto Xiaohu, which chunks half of his health. As RNG try to disengage from the fight, Yankos uses both his clone and Nimbus strike to get in range to knock up both Bin and Xiaohu with the second charge of Cyclone. The CC also applies a stack of Kaisa's Plasma which allows Flacket to dive into the backline and finish off Xiaohu. Flacket then lands Voidseeker on Gala and flashes forward in an attempt to solo kill the enemy AD carry, which Flacket is not quite able to do, but he does have the safety to go for this play thanks to a Guardian Angel revive. 
Broken Blade takes a big chunk of damage but is able to use Zonia's Hourglass in time to survive, and he gets another big heal from his second empowered Q of the fight as Caps finishes off Bin. Caps picks up a flash with his Spell Thief and uses it to jump over the wall and land a Paddle Star onto Ming and an Everfrost that roots both Ming and Gala before going into a stasis himself. Wei lands Sonic Wave onto Flakid, but his Resonating Strike barely doesn't connect since his GA gets popped by Broken Blade's third empowered Q of the fight. When Caps exits his stasis, he finishes off Gala with a Portal Jump and Ignite, and the three remaining members of G2 finish off Wei when he revives, giving them an ace and the win against RNG. Thank you for watching Hyperanalyzing MSI. Hit subscribe and come back next week for my analysis of the knockout stage.